Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft Season 6. Last time we was working on our minigame and we managed to complete the red side. We did all of the score point systems, we did all the different flags, we did the entire interior. Well, as far as, as, far as a very bare bone, non really texturized uh, interior. And we even made the capture system functional. We made the respawn room over here for the red side. And since then I've added some beds. We made the dispensing of... Uh, of the starting items. We even made the melee weapon shop or melee weapon shop. We made it so that these are actually now stocked with the correct items in accordance to the book which we made. And by the way, if anyone wonders, every shop is going to have 20 boxes and this is how they are divided in case you want to know the rarity and commonness, etc. of the different boxes. Basically, we did a ton of work on this game in the last episode. There's only one problem. It doesn't really look like we have done a lot here. It still just looks... It doesn't really look like a game at all at this point in time. And today, to start this episode off, the plan is to change that. Oh, and by the way, in between episodes, I actually went ahead and I made the entire yellow side as well. So we have the same things here. We have the counter, we have the spawning room all installed. We have the pressure plates, we have the automatic dispensers. And all of this is done. So at this point in time, quite honestly, if I would stock the game with all the different shop things, again, from the book here, uh, it, it's playable. It is playable. It has winning functions. It has the flags placed. Yeah, we could totally play this game. But again, it really doesn't look like a game at this moment in time. It looks really, 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 really garbage. Really rubbish. I think the main thing that is missing is the walls. If I install proper looking perimeter walls around this whole place, I think it's going to lift the entire game. I do want these walls to look good, but I want them to be kind of simplistic. Now I made my way back to the shopping district and I gotta say, it's good to be back here. I, the more I'm away from this, I, <laughs> the more I miss this place. It really does look incredible. All the things that we've created throughout the season, but I need to pick up. Oh, I need to pick up terracotta and well, we do have the yellow here. Unfortunately, they're out of the red. I guess I can buy this stuff and re-dye it. These are my last 12 diamonds. I think I'm going to have to spend every single one of them. And by this episode, I won't have a single diamond left. Yeah, I I just did. That's that is really sad. That's actually all of the terracotta that I can afford. Please say that we have terracotta at home here. Yes. I knew that I had a box somewhere. I knew that I had a box somewhere. Okay, that is really good news. Now, the reason I want the terracotta is because I came up with the idea of having each side sort of represented in the wall and not just to make the wall completely flat with stone. And this is what I'm what I'm suggesting. So we'd have every seven blocks would have something that looks like this and now that we have the cool new brick walls we can add these things and yeah that is looking pretty good already and then i was thinking we have some chisel blocks in the middle <laughs> which looks like ice perfect to finish this up i'm thinking we should add smooth stone slabs just like this have a nice little arc and then have something like this wrapping around i'm not entirely sure at this moment in time if that's going to look the best but yeah, I guess, I guess I, I just have to crack on. <laughs> I guess I just have to crack on and get this thing done because it's not really going to look anything until I have the whole thing completed. And there are a lot of walls to do. <laughs> but regardless of there being many walls, I have grinded it out. And what a sight it is. It really, it really, really works. Yeah, I think this looks absolutely fantastic it does look very empty on the side walls here they are i'm planning on having some kind of pixel logo sitting in the sides here on either side like a sword or something like that i haven't quite figured it out yet um they do look very white it almost reminds me of like a jousting arena ribbons or something like that which actually really really fits the whole idea here yeah i'm, I'm really really happy with this and the game now looks so clean uh, of course, we still have to do the terrain and whatever we want to do with it, 
But all in all, like <laughs> this, this brought the game to a completely new level, if you ask me. Um, is Green's house, has he extended his house way over my balloon? My balloon looks a bit deflated as well. What the heck? Hold on. Green, did you build yours higher than mine? Oh! <laughs> no, what? Wait a minute, what the heck, man? <laughs> you got it. Actually, that is way lower down than what it was, right? That is, yeah, that is definitely way lower down than what it was. Oh my goodness, did he, did he rebuild my entire house further down? Did that anvil bring that house all the way down? <laughs> that looks spectacular. Oh, the house looks very dumb there, though. No. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, these these balloons that were just stray balloons, they were definitely not as tall as they are now. So he is... He must have brought my entire house down. This is... This is... This is ridiculous. <laughs> and in addition to that, he is also... Yeah, that was the top of his house before he's also extended his house all the way up. So it passes Mambo's rocket. And once again... Well, I'm technically still higher up than Mumbo is, and now we can definitely talk about tallness because now it's definitely connected to the floor, even though there are no rules or anything like that. But yeah, that is that is that is a sad sight. It has actually been brought down. So I realize at this point in time that I'm fully assuming that Grian is the one to bring my house down. It could also be Mumbo. I'm gonna have to look through my comments and stuff like that, but. Yeah, I, I fully assume that it's green at this moment in time. I'm just stunned with the fact that he has rebuilt my entire house. I... Yeah, he's it's, it's really, it's really done it. He's really done it. So now I gotta think about a different approach, a different way to once again beat the others. I mean... Just looking at Green's house here, it's... It gotta be pretty heavy at this point in time. It has to be pretty heavy. I wonder if the ground is really like reinforced properly so it doesn't start sinking. That would be a shame. The best way to think about retaliation is to just, well, just ah, to not get a creeper exploding in my face. Is to just take a little bit of a break from the area and be alone with my thoughts. And so far, I've come up with nothing. I still don't know how to retaliate. <laughs> Grian pulling my house down, if it now is Grian, is quite a genius and harshest move. So I have to find a way to top that. I'll keep thinking, but whilst I've been alone with my thoughts, I've actually been productive. I've been caving for the past three hours and I've got 26 diamond ore blocks right now. I feel so freaking rich. That's like 5,000. No, it's like 40 diamonds, but it's still... 40 more diamonds than I have. All right, let's see how much diamonds we actually get from this. 57, I think that's pretty lucky. So I can't stop thinking about this. I really can't stop thinking about this. And I have done some research and indeed it is Green that is responsible for this. He's a madman. He actually rebuilt my entire house <laughs> block by block. Which is also why the balloon is looking slightly, or the balloons are looking slightly different. But I gotta say, overall, he did such a good job with this. I'm kind of impressed. Even though it's really sad, because it did look very good up there when it was spanning across. But, I mean, I'm very impressed. But like I said, I cannot stop thinking about this. And, luckily, I've actually come up with a pretty good idea. <laughs> i come up with a pretty good idea for how I could further extend this house. You see, one of the problems is obviously that I don't just want to build something on top of the balloons because I think that would look stupid. And I don't have that much of a footprint to work with either because, <laughs> because 
<laughs> well, it's it's covered. So yeah, I had to think outside the box a little bit for what I'm going to do. But I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to let you guys sit on it. And I also want to see if you dudes have any suggestions for what you want to see. And maybe I will incorporate those as well. So do leave that down below in the comments. But for now, we're actually going to leave Hermitville for this episode. I... I'm going to head out to a very, very, very distant location. So I've made my way out here to the ice farm, which in itself is a distant location, but this is nowhere near as distant and remote as I'm thinking. I am actually going to have to travel if we look at F3. Oh my goodness, this, <laughs> this is a lot further away than I thought. I'm going to have to travel south of here. 7,000 blocks. 7,500 blocks, and I'm gonna have to travel west about 2,000 blocks to reach my final destination. Uh, I got my Lytra, it's almost fully repaired, I got a lot of rockets, and I got an ender chest, I do have some food, I think I'm ready for this. Okay, I've already changed my mind. The <laughs> For some reason, maybe because Exuma is AFK or something, but for some reason, the chunks are <laughs> loading in super sluggishly like there's no way i'm gonna be able to fly 7,000 blocks without seeing what i'm flying to i'm gonna have to do this in a different way luckily right next to my ice form is actually my mega mine of doom we haven't been here in a long time but this was a project that we did earlier this season and i'm really happy with it i have been here alone a few times but i barely ever bring you guys with me i have diamond ores here what I'm taking those with me. Okay, there we go. I got more obsidian than I need now. And now I could do this journey in the nether. It should su sufficiently shorten it. But it's still going to be about a thousand blocks I need to do in the nether. Okay, so let's be smart about this. We need to head in the south direction. And I have my wither skeleton farm tunnel going south first. Yeah, look at this. That's going south. Which is good. Every block we travel now is going to help us on this journey. So I'm gonna use this tunnel, and then when it turns left up here, I think I'll just keep going straight. Yeah, that should be the fastest way. And thanks to my wither skeleton tunnel, I'm actually as south as I need to be already. That took me seven minutes to dig a 1x2. That wasn't bad at all. <laughs> that was really quick. Okay, so now I just need to go... No, not that direction. I just need to go 300 blocks this direction as well. Oh, no. Ah, this is a little bit unfortunate. <laughs> Another one? Come on. Now, you, now this is just messing with me. And I just destroyed my ender chest. Oh, for goodness sake, I'm an idiot. I don't even have blaze powder. I can't even build a new one. This does look like a pretty dangerous run, but I need to get further that way, so... Uh, I think I'm gonna try and kill this lava. Boop! This is truly one of the most satisfying things you can do in Minecraft. Killing massive lava lakes by one little block. I love it. <laughs> it seems to have taken me longer to dig the 300 blocks to the side than it did to dig the 1000 blocks south. <laughs> Which is ridiculous, because I hit three of these massive lava ocean rooms, but... With that being said, I think, yeah, actually right here. Whew, please be correct. Yes! 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 It was correct! I did my measurements correctly. Oh my goodness. Hello, Mushroom Island. My favorite biome in Minecraft. Now I need to pop back into the nether for a tiny bit because I need to... Oh my goodness, that's lucky. Yes! Because I need to find a blaze to kill so I can make a new ender chest. And this was the most lucky thing I've ever seen. Blaze rod, yes. Okay, let's get out of here. I was kind of blind. I didn't look this way, but the nether fortress is visible on that side. <laughs> I just thought, I really hope that I have wood. Oh yes, thank goodness. I need one little crafting table. I actually had... Quite a bit of wood. Good. Alright, so now I have an ender chest and I have an extra one as well. And now you may be wondering why have we come to this super remote location? Well, first of all, I want to take a good look around, but I did look up in one of those seed programs, Mine Atlas. 
I looked for a mushroom island that was close to our current base and there was absolutely none. The closest one I think Doc lives on and it's up in the north. And then I found this and the fun thing with this one was that it was directly south of our base. And so it's basically just a massive, we're basically occupying the entirety of the southern Hermitcraft with, we have our base, and then we have our Mega Ice farm, and then we have our Wither Skeleton farm would be over here, and then we have this Mushroom Island way, way down, far, far down there somewhere. So now that Minecraft 1.14 is out, I am super excited to get back into building base modules and to building uh, the new farms that we can do with TNT farming. And specifically, I'm really excited about the villagers. I really, as you guys know, I really love abusing villagers and trying to trade as much as I can so that I don't have to spend diamonds. And guess what? Now that we have the disenchantment wheel thing, the grinding stone thing, Thing, we can actually make use of a lot more trades than we could in the past. The problem is, the current lab that we're in is simply not big enough and there's no space for me to really expand in that area unless I build something overground and trust me, I've been, I've been thinking about this for a long time. I have decided to start a new mega base of doom and I want to do it in a mushroom island because this biome is amazing. It doesn't spawn hostile mobs. The grass here, if we were to place grass, has the most amazing grass color. It's the same as a jungle, so it looks extremely green and extremely vivid. And I just really love this color. I think it's beautiful. We also have these guys, our friends, the mushrooms. And in 114, there are brown mushrooms that we can get as well. I'll be honest, I, I don't exactly know how you get brown mushrooms, but it's something we can look into. You can actually farm these pretty well in a place like this as well if you make the everything correct for it which i once did in a single player world called iska's island for those of you who didn't see it now i want to have a quick look around because there's another mushroom island not far from here to the east which may be better but i thought we'd start with this one and what i want to find is an ocean monument somewhat close by the closer by the better and because these islands are in the water or in the ocean as you can see, uh, we should be able to find some monument somewhere. Oh my goodness, yes, there is a monument right here. And that is actually pretty close. Yeah, that's actually extremely close. <laughs> that is... Wait a minute. Can I, can I see from it? Yeah, that is... Oh my goodness, that is so close to the Mushroom Island. I was not expecting it to be that close. Oh, that's great. Ocean Monument, Iskal, really? I mean, you already have a Guardian Farm near your base, as it is. I do, but it is shared with Cubfan, and it isn't ideal for single-player farming Guardians for XP. It was very good in the beginning when a lot of people were online, and way before Exuma had his Guardian Farm. But right now, it's actually quite hard to get that thing to be super efficient and to farm Sea Lanterns and all those things. So, I would actually like to rebuild it, and I've been speaking with Cubfan about this, and he's not too keen on the design I want to go with, so I've decided I'm just going to create another one. As you can probably tell, I'm over the moon of excited with this new project. It is indeed going to be a mega project. It's something that's going to span over months and months, but it's going to be so much fun, and I am really excited to get started. Today, I think before we are done, the very first thing... I want to do, there's a shipwreck there. The very first thing I want to do is see if we can find a close by village and bring our very first villagers over. Because as I said, <laughs> the main sort of thing with this new mega base is going to be villagers. I want to center everything around the new village mechanics and the trades and all that stuff. Well, there is a mega desert right next to the Mushroom Island, but no villages. It is good that there's a desert here, though, because I may want to use a lot of uh, sand. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Am I going to be exploring my first desert temple this season? It looks like it. Oh, what? We just, we just got diamonds in that. Apart from that, there's not really anything useful, though. Aha, I found a village. Yes, okay, 
This village is actually like a thousand blocks away though. Oh my goodness, that looks amazing! The Mesa village! Or no, not Mesa village. This is Savannah, the Savannah village. They got banners and stuff. Hello, dudes. You're gonna be part of this. I love your outfit. I lo <laughs> love these outfits. Hey, wait up. Wait up, dude. I choose you, Mr... Oh, he has a profession, actually. He's a clerk. Can you can you get into this boat, my dude? Seriously. Oh, no. I hit him. Okay. Will I forever have bad reputation with this village now? Ah, oh, that's like the one thing I didn't want to do. I wonder if he spread the gossip. I think that if they don't have time to spread the gossip, it should be good. I can show you the world. Glorious mushroomy and purple You and me, Uncle Bertle Yes, it is a uh, shore there A whole new world Look at him He's so happy There it is You see it in the distance, Bertle You see it in the distance So one villager is now securely uh, transported over to the Mushroom Island And I know that it's night time but it is completely safe over here because of the fact that it's a mushroom island. So we won't get any nasty spawns, any mobs, regardless of the light level. And that goes from all the way in, from build limit all the way down to bedrock. It's so very nice. You don't have to think about lighting things up. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Phantom spawn here. <laughs> I did not know that. Uh, oh, why? It doesn't even make sense. Why would Phantom spawn on a mushroom island? <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> so with one villager safely secure in the new mega base of doom, which so far contains of his best friend's head, the villager, two torches and an ender chest and an obsidian portal over there, I actually have to head out of here for today because I just got a message from Mumbo Jumbo that we are now ready to go on an end bust and we're actually gonna do that live on a stream so when you see this video if you missed it that footage will be available on my twitch channel twitch.tv slash escal85 and click videos on demand or videos depending on what language you have and you'll be able to find that footage if you want to if you don't want to watch it that's fine i will give you the result once we are back from that thing but i reckon we're spending the next four five six hours in the end with the goal of getting 500 shulker boxes for the sahara project so that we can finally launch the sahara shop one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven oh and then the server like 11 12 double chests of shulker boxes and then a few more this has been the most successful end raiding we've ever done so me and mumbo started out and we're end busting for about two hours and then green joined in for the past well for the last 30 minutes of it and in total yeah we got 12 double chests and then some 12 double chests equals Drum load, brrr, 648 shulker boxes, which is absolutely incredible. That means that we can now pretty much, yeah, well, we can launch Sahara. I have never seen this many shulker boxes in one place before. This is absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. Now, I will say this, we should definitely come up with a color for Sahara Shulker boxes. So, these are the boxes that will be going in the system that you will get your items in. They will actually not be for the customers, they'll just be delivered to the customer. And, I mean, naturally, I would think that we should color them all white. But, in the stream that we just did, I asked the question and my chat seemed to think that we should do them yellow. So, I'd be interested to see what you guys here on YouTube think that we should color them in. And, if you have an opinion on it, please do put it down below in the, in the comments. So in addition to all the Schalke boxes, I also personally managed to get these things here. So a bunch of new armor pieces, a bunch of swords, and a, a crap ton of elytras like this. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. I also got myself more diamonds. So I now have 10 block of diamonds and 7 diamonds. And this is in the same episode where we had 0 diamonds in the beginning. That feels really good. I do, I do now have some diamonds, which I'm very, very happy about. Lastly, I also want to say a massive thank you to all of the people who came out and watched either mine or Mumbo stream or the people who watched both streams. I actually 
hit a viewer record of over 10,000 people watching me live on Twitch towards the end. Well, I mean, Mambo did help out and he raided me to be fair. But even before that, there was a consistent number of 3,600 people, which is almost viewer record just in a normal stream. So that is absolutely fantastic. And thank you ever so much if you, if you were there. And if you missed it, make sure to follow my Twitch channel. Make sure to hit the little heart. And I'm actually going to say this. I'm 1,000 people away from hitting 100,000 followers on Twitch, so that means if 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 1,000 people watching this video would go over and hit my hit the heart on Twitch, I would reach an incredible milestone, and I would be ever so grateful and really really appreciate it. So, yeah, go go and do that if you if if you fancy watching me live on Twitch. It would really help me out. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have to set up a new meeting with the architects. We have to do a proper launch date. And I'm pretty sure Green wants to be in charge of that. So let me know down below in the comments what type of color we should put for the Schalke boxes. Personally, I think white, but maybe yellow is better. Or maybe you have a completely different suggestion. But that is going to do it for today. I'm so excited about the upcoming few episodes. So excited to start the Mushroom Island and all the projects that we are going to be doing there. And so excited to finally launch so Sahara because yeah it's 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 been a, it's been a stretch anyway if you enjoyed the video make sure to hit the like button if you're brand new consider subscribing and I will see you dudes in the next episode